Hello everyone, I'm so happy to be here with you today. I am Dr. Chelsea Haig and today we are talking about the three yeses and helping kids feel felt. This is one of my absolute favorite tools because it really helps us to build connection and gives us a structure for how to talk to our kids when things are tough. Now this is a great tool for you to use with your own kids, for you to use with any 4-H kids that you work with, um, and you know, even for adults sometimes I use this. So oftentimes when you have a child who has had an experience that has been tricky, if you will, challenging in whatever way. So maybe they um, got in a fight with someone, maybe they've done something that's, you know, a crime in some way. Um, maybe they're mad about something, maybe they're struggling for whatever reason. Oftentimes, the issue is that the child or the young person um, doesn't yet feel felt. And what happens is that we react to the thing and then we have a kid who's contending with our anger instead of contending with the thing that they did that wasn't okay. And I wanna keep the focus there. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a tool called the three yeses and before I move into educating, moralizing, teaching, any of that kind of stuff, um, I want to know the child, let the child know that I feel them, I'm here, I got you and we are going to get through this together. Okay, so a big piece of this is going to be making sure that you are calm enough in order to do the three yeses. Um, and you're gonna ask the child three yes questions that they can, the three questions they can say yes to. Um, now this can, can be trickier than it sounds because you really wanna make sure that those questions are um, very attuned to them. So they need to really be from the person, the child or the young person's perspective, um, which means that you have to get out of your own perspective. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. I'm gonna give you an example um, with a little child and then I'm gonna give you an example with a teenager so that you can see that this is a tool that will work across the lifespan. Um, and what you're doing here is that you're building the connection as to say to the, the child or young, young person, I'm here, no matter what, I'm gonna be here and we're gonna get through this together. Um, you're of course going to hold the boundary and I'm gonna show you how to do that in these two examples. Um, but inside of holding the boundary, you're gonna connect. Um, and I think for a lot of us, when something has gone down and it's tricky and it's hard, we just don't really know what to say. Um, and or we might be so frustrated that like, we don't know how to build connection or we can't build connection. And that's where I think this um, kind of structure, this way of talking is really, really helpful. So what you're doing again, um, is you're gonna ask the child to young person three questions from their perspective to which they can answer yes, with the goal of generating connection and getting connected so that after you do that and after you've helped the young person or the child re-regulate, then you're going to, you know, then you can move into like how this is gonna be in the future or priming, which we're gonna talk about um, after in the next video. So three yeses. Um, I have three kids and a couple of months ago, pre-pandemic, we were in Mexico and with my husband's family um, and they had these two cups that had straws built in them. Many other kinds of cups, but two of the cups had straws like in the sides of them. So two straw cups, three kids, you do the math. It's not good, right? So these straw cups were very popular and um, we were getting into sort of nit gritty battleground kind of territory about every meal time whenever the straw cups came out. Um, and so one morning we're having breakfast, the whole extended family's there, um, the juice comes out, all my kids want the straw cups, two of them got it, one of them didn't, and now the one who didn't get the straw cup is melting down. And I just wanna say before she crawls under the table, she's crying, um, I wanna say, and I've already said to her like, you can have the straw cup next. Right now we're drinking out of this other cup. I've done a lot of other kinds of supports. She's still having a really hard time. Um, and I just wanna say that it's important here for you to notice how you're doing. Because here's what I was feeling in that moment, like mortified that my in-laws were now seeing this 
challenging moment with my child. I was like, oh my gosh, they probably think I can't handle my kids. Um, my kid is crawling under the table. It's so rude. I was, ha it's just a straw cup. I was having all of these thoughts. Okay. Um, so it's important to notice that and be able to release those because if you get too caught up in that, you're not going to be able to ask three yes questions from your child's perspective because you're in your own perspective. Um, so Sometimes I like to notice and release, notice and release, okay? Um, so I went under the table, I got her, I have her on my lap, and I did the three yeses, okay? So I was like, you really want to straw cup? She's crying. Sobs start to slow, she's like, yeah. Um, I'm like, you can't wait for a straw cup, you need it right now. And she's like, yeah. Um, and I'm like, you're mad that your sisters got here first and your grandma gave them the straw cups. She's like, yeah. So I just sat with that. Okay, so notice that I'm not fixing it. I'm not getting her the straw cup. I'm just generating connection. Okay, so now she's sitting on my lap. She's no longer um, really loud. So that makes me, that helps me feel a little bit better, right? That my in-laws are not like having the entire breakfast disrupted by a really, really loud child. Um, and she sat in my lap and I, you know, we let it sit for a while. And then I turned to one of the other siblings and I said, you know, she's having kind of a tricky time. I wonder when you're going to be ready to share your straw cup. Are you ready now? Um, and sister said, nope. <laughs> you know, this is real talk, right? The sister's like, nope. And so instead of getting mad about it or getting like nitpicky or getting into the negatives, I just said, okay, I bet you'll be ready soon. And then there's a few things you can do. I can continue with the yeses with the child that I'm holding. I could say to the child that I'm holding, let's sing the ABCs and then see if she's ready. Or let's sing another song and then see if she's ready. Or let's play tic-tac-toe and then see if she's ready, right? So you're get, continuing the connection, right? You've built the connection with the three S's. Now you got to continue with the connection until she, you know, until something happens. So in this particular case, um, we sang the ABCs. That's one of my go-tos. Um, and probably one or two times through, sister's like, okay, I'm done with my juice. She gives her the straw cup and go on with breakfast. But notice, I had to stop what I was doing and really put all of my attention, not on the kids who had the straw cups, but on the kid who was melting down. And sometimes people will say, but doesn't that reinforce the meltdown? And I wanna say to you, um, I don't want you to reinforce the meltdown. Reinforcing the meltdown would be giving her a straw cup. Okay, but I do want you to reinforce the child. So don't reinforce the behavior, but be with the child, um, right? And you can do that. You can totally do that. It just takes a little bit of practice. And sometimes you'll use the three S's and the kid will say no, and then you'll know like, that wasn't the right thing. Some kids um, respond more or less to the three S's, so play with it. Um, so when, when I work with people, we really look at brain systems and what kinds of brain systems, um, are, you know, each kid is operating from during different moments. And some kids are what we call relevance kids. They will operate more from their relevance brain and kids that are relevance kids who really need to feel felt do great with the three S's. So let me give you an example of a teenager and then we will wrap up and move on. So this is a family that I worked with who had gone to Tahoe and um, one of the, the girl really wanted, the daughter really wanted to bring a friend um, and she couldn't. Um, so she went up to Tahoe and you know, she was the oldest child in the family and the grandparents had paid for the trip and um, she was very sullen and angry. Um, so she was up in her room on her phone and one of the things that this family always did in Tahoe was play board games. Um, so teenage girl up in her room refusing to play board games, rest of the family, uh, younger kids playing with grandparents. Um, the parents, of course, were quite mortified um, because they really wanted their daughter to be participating in this delightful trip that the grandparents had gifted the family. Um, and so mom was trying to like unplug the internet and like do all this stuff kind of to strong arm um, the teenage girl into participating. And I don't know if you've ever tried to strong arm a teenager like that or outthink them, but it generally doesn't work. Um, 
and they're probably smarter than you anyway, so they're gonna come up with a, you know, they're gonna be able to outthink you. Um, and so, you know, I think in this situation too, it's important to notice, like, what are you feeling? What is the parent feeling? And how's that manifesting? So in this situation, like parents were trying to pull the internet and like yelling at her and threatening, um, you know, and threatening, um, it's it's when you start to hear in your voice, like if then, if you don't do, if you don't come play these board games right now, then you're never gonna go skiing. Or if you don't come do this, then you're never gonna have a, play, you're never gonna have a friend over again or you know, whatever. Um, so that generally doesn't work because it breaks the connection. It disrupts the relationship. And so we wanna move away from that. Um, and what we're moving towards is generating connection so you can rely on the connection, even with your big kids and teens, to get that girl down to play the board games, right? Or at least to participate in some way. Um, so I want that teenager to know that we love you just, and you can come and be in this family however you are. We, we got you. Um, and I will be with you in this. Um, so we ha I had the mother go up and sit um, on the floor of the, t the girl's bedroom. But this is important when you're working with bigger kids to have the adult sit higher up um, so that in probably like side by side. So she was, you know, they're both facing the same direction, same reason that the car works so well with big kids, right? Um, and ask three questions. So this was tricky for the parent because um, the parent felt like, I don't wanna ask her three questions. She should be grateful that we're here doing this. Um, but that's not from her perspective. And so instead, we crafted three questions and they were something like, you really wish you had a friend to play with here or a friend to hang with. You feel like playing with your si playing board games with your siblings is like dumb and babyish and you're counting the days till we get to go home, okay? So that takes something for the parent to sit with a teenager, to, to say that, and then to sit with a teenager in that, right? And it's okay if they don't say anything. There might, you don't have to fill all the space with words. Um, but that's the kind of feeling that you're trying to generate. Um, and then you might say, I don't know, let's try one board game and then, you know, then maybe you can call your friend. Or um, you might, you know, after you've done the three yeses, you might um, move your young person to participate. But I all, what I also want you to let go of is the need for them to participate in a particular way, right? The need for them to participate maybe in the way that their younger siblings are or the way that you wish they were. Um, it's fine to be a teen. So important to empathize with that and create that feeling. Now that's not to say that you're gonna say to your teenager, fine, have a friend or it's a, you know, whatever, like um, there's still a boundary, right? We always play together. We always play these board games when we're here with our grandparents together. Um, but you're gonna, you're connected through it. And then lots of praise. So when your young person does make even a small movement towards doing the right thing, you wanna heap on the praise. And for a, a big kid or a teen, your praise is probably gonna be softly effusive. So it might just be soft eyes. It might be like, yeah, thanks for coming down, man. You know, like it might be simple or soft or not big and effusive like you would for a toddler or a young child. But um, knowing that your teenager also needs that kind of connection or your big kid. And some kids, you know, it's funny. Some kids are big kids when they're nine and some kids aren't big kids until they're 13. So you you think about your own particular child and what they what kind of approach they need given their their age and also their profile, how they're developing, who they are in the world, their personality, what they respond to, all that kind of good stuff. So that is the three yeses, super important to build connection. Remember you're asking three yes questions, three questions from your child or young person's perspective to which they can answer. Um, you're doing that with the goal of building connection. You may not solve the thing, but you are going to build connection. And then you can gently hold the boundary inside of the connection. I hope that you're well. Helping you to build common cooperative families is my mission. Take care.